Welcome to the next video in the series on programming against SQL Lite. In this video, I'm going to show you how to program against SQL using the Lua programming language. Why Lua? Lua is an embeddable C program uh, that gives you the productivity of an interpreted language in an embedded application. It uses only ANSI C, so it's pretty easy to add into any embedded C product. Uh, it's lightweight and very fast. A friend of mine used it for a critical real-time application and he was able to get some pretty spectacular results with it. Uh, mainly because he cut his his cycle time for small code changes from 15 minutes to do edit, compile, link, run, load, whatever, all the way down to about 30 seconds. He makes a quick change, downloads it, downloads the data to the embedded device and, and tries it. Again, that's the power of an interpreted language. Uh, with Lua, you can call C functions from Lua, and Lua function flexibility as you need. Think library. And again, it only uses ANSI C. Um, it's also very lightweight. I think it it weighs in at about 300 kilobytes. So for most embedded applications, it's <laughs> very small. Um, and again, it gives you the productivity of a relational database in an embedded application. You can use it for uh, just like a, any other relational database to drive behavior for configuration data, logging, etc. And because it's relational, you can normalize your data, and that enables you to write applications much faster. Um, there are essentially three methods for uh, connecting to SQLite. The connect method opens up a database file and the database is all stored in one file. The execute method, uh, you can write execute writes such as create table, insert, update, drop table, delete, um, and it returns a, a return code when you do that. Or you can do reads which is essentially select and the select returns an array of arrays and you can use a cursor to iterate through the rows. The last method of course is close to close the database. So let's get going. If you notice, there are no files in this directory. So the first thing I'll do is I'll fire up the Lua interpreter. As of this date, 514 is the latest one for Windows. And uh, the first thing you got to do is you have to call require Lua SQL Lite 3. Um, and then you have to create an environment object and a connection. So you got environment equals this, and then connection equals connect, and you connect to lua.db. That's all I'm going to do for a second. Once you do that, you can just close everything by closing the connection and closing the environment. Now when I control C out of this, you'll notice lua.db is fine, and I go SQLite 3, lua.db, and if I dump the database, you'll notice there's nothing in it, but you have one. Okay, so I'm going to go back into Lua and do a little bit more. Uh, again, I'm going to create the environment and the connection. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table. And the table is just a small table of players, standard SQL. And I'm not going to bother with the close and dump because uh, SQL Lite is very transactional. So if I could control C out of it, if I run the dump, you'll notice now that this create table statement was executed and the database now has a table. Nothing in the table, there's nothing there, but that'll come. So I go back into Lua. Again, I set up my connection and my environment and all that. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is the interactive Lua shell, so any statement that you execute here can also be executed in a Lua program. That's the beauty of it. All right, next thing I'm going to do is create just a Lua variable. It's a Lua array or a Lua table full of uh, a bunch of values. And then what I'm going to do is iterate through that table with a for loop, just a Lua for loop. And here's what I'm going to do. For each uh, list in this table, Nick Gavin, Image, Mage, Warrior, Priest, whatever, there's the three rows in the table. I'm going to do an insert into players, that's my table in SQLite, values, and I'm going to have two placeholders, and I'm going to use the name and the class 
as the parameters. So it's going to scream through that, and it's done. Now if I get out and I dump the database, you'll notice all these values that were in the Lua table are now persistently in Lua.db, which is your database file. Now back into Lua. And um, next thing I want to do, I have to set up the environment again. Next thing I'm going to do is um, run a select command. So because it's a select command, I have to assign it to a cursor. I just call it CUR. Again, using assert is only needed to make sure that it runs properly. If you're playing, you don't have to do that. Um, so now I'm going to initialize the first row by saying row is cursor fetch and give it some parameters. Um, now what I'm going to do is while row I'm going to iterate through the um, cursor and you'll notice I print new row for each element in the table. I'll do a cursor fetch and then it prints it out. And that's pretty well it for using uh, Lua. If I do a dump again, you'll notice that all the values are still in the table. So, in, so what you can do, what this video showed is you can use Lua to uh, add things to the database, query things from the database. You can pass parameters so you can use the data in your application both for inputting data and uh, for extracting data. And, uh, and you can do it with Lua. So that concludes this video. If you found the video useful, please uh, comment on it so that, um, so that it's actually easier to find for other people. And uh, if you can rate it too, that would be wonderful. It only takes a few seconds. So I hope, it, uh, I hope you enjoy it and hope it makes your programming more effective.